So the 90s were great, but maybe we stick to the music and not the orange stain and green chair combo. We're going to start by sanding this table. I'm using the Festool sander and I'm using an 80 grit. I will follow up with a 120, 150, and then I will wet the table to raise the grain and do a final sand with 180 that you will see later on in the video. I like the Festool sander. I like that it runs and you don't have to keep the trigger engaged. It's just a personal preference of mine. Matt prefers the Surf Prep sander. He says it's more smooth. You'll see the Surf Prep sander later on in the video. Now we don't always start with 80, but this finish was a little stubborn. On the chairs that you'll see in a little bit, I started with 120. This leaf was no exception. I did have to do 80 on it as well. I think the tabletop, it just has a more durable stain than what they put on the seats. Speaking of seats, I'm going to give you a little tip on how to do your chairs. But first, I have to remove all of the screws and then check to make sure that this seat base is not actually glued to the seat, which, spoiler alert, it was not, and I was able to proceed. But our tip is that we are going to label the chair base to the actual chair. And how we do that is I take a little bit of painter's tape, I put a one on it, and I put one of the stickers on the seat base and then I put the other number one sticker onto the actual chair that will not be painted. This is the inside bottom seat that you'll never see. You'll do this with um, seat two for um, chair two, um, etc. Now we are onto the chairs and like I said earlier, we are going with 120 grit and then I will follow up with 150. I will wet it and then I will go to 180. There is nothing more gratifying than sanding a table edge, but you do have to do it carefully. Here I am going in with 180 grit and I am going, I am constantly moving my sander so that I do not change the overall shape of the table. If you stay in it for too long, you will make a flat surface and you want to keep the same edges that you had previously with the other stain. But this is so gratifying and this usually comes off so easily. Now I am taking a damp rag and I'm going over the table, the leaf, and the chair bases, and I'm going to let it dry most of the way, and then I'm going to sand with 180. Doing this, getting a damp cloth and letting it dry raises the grain so that you're able to do a smoother finish. Now we're going to move on and hand it over to Matt. Matt is going to be prepping these chairs for paint. We are going to be using General Finishes Milk Paint in the color Dark Chocolate. But like any other paint, I don't care what they say about no prep, needs a good prep because there's a, always a lot of dirt and grime, furniture polish, oils, daily wear and tear, dust, dirt, things like that that needs to come off and your paint will not adhere if you do not have a smooth surface. The way that we prep is we use a 50-50 mix of denatured alcohol and water and a green Scotch-Brite pad. We scrub it down and then we take a damp rag and we wipe it off. After we do that, it leaves a white ash-like residue, which is completely normal. Do not freak out and we just scuff sand it. Matt is using our 3x4 electric ray and he's just doing a light scuff sand just to get that off and then we will be ready for paint. Chairs are always so tricky because you have to flip it upside down, sideways, every which way in order to get all angles of the chair. It's a bit of a challenge. And now Matt is moving on to the table base and here he is painting the seats dark chocolate. Now this milk paint does not require a primer, um, just a very good prep process which you saw that we did. Now he is putting the table together and he is going to tape it off to protect the tabletop and edges that I've already sanded from getting paint on it and he is going to paint the table base. 
It's a little hard to tell in this video about how the dark chocolate is going on over the dark green, but in the final reveal, it does make a big difference and you can see it when you look at the before and the after. In case you're wondering, we use an Apollo sprayer. We use the Precision 5 sprayer and we like it a lot. We highly recommend it. One thing that we do to ensure a factory smooth finish is that we will scuff sand in between our coat of paint and our top coats. This just gets all the air bubbles out, any dust or anything that has collected when your paint or stain was drying, and it gives such a smooth finish. Now Matt is going to be staining the seats. This is the color Antique Walnut by General Finishes. This is a gel stain, and this is a little bit more forgiving on how it settles in. One thing I forgot to mention is that we did use a damp rag of mineral spirits to put on the seats and the tabletop before we applied this because this kind of acts like a pre-stain conditioner and it also allows the stain to take more evenly. Another fun fact and helpful tip that we have is that you can see that this seat is elevated and we have these little painters triangles that this is sitting on which allows Matt to get around um, all the edges of the seat. And here are those painters triangles that I was telling you about. And here is a better view of how they work and how it elevates the seat so that Matt can stain and get all around the edges. As you can see, the side that is wet is the side that Matt has just put some mineral spirits on, and now he is going to be applying the gel stain to the tabletop. So here are some tips for applying a gel stain. The first one is to apply a very liberal amount. The second one is to leave a wet edge. The third tip is to really rub it in or wipe it back. And our last tip is that we like to use a water-based top coat, and this is an oil-based gel stain, so we need to let it dry for at least 72 hours to ensure that it is completely dry before proceeding with our top coat. Now it is time to do the top coat. These are one of the final steps before we are done with our flip. And in between coats of top coat, we do a light scuff sand to get all of those little air bubbles out and dust and anything that has collected onto the seats while the top coat was drying. We do the top coat on the stained um, bases, the stained tabletop, and as well as the painted chairs. All of this will get three coats. The two top coats that we recommend, we like the Malaysi 2K top coat, but we also really like the General Finishes high performance top coat, and that is a little bit more readily available for everyone. Here's when Matt is scuff sanding. We use the red rad pad for scuff sanding between coats, and you can use our code MOSES10 for 10% off on the Surf Prep website. I love that in this light you can really see how gorgeous that dark chocolate milk paint is. Now Matt is just blowing off the excess dust from when we did our scuff sanding. You can just wipe it back. And now we are going on with our second top coat and we'll save you the list of going through another scuff sand and a third top coat, but this is just a sanding block that we used for the tabletop. Now it is time to put the chairs back onto the seats and match up the one and the one together. This makes it super easy because all of the holes and everything are perfectly lined up from the original seat and the original base. Now it is back to me. I have just come from work. If you do not know, I am a pediatric OR nurse and I work with Matt one to two days a week. So I get some extra stuff done when I get home from work. 
And I am going to be staging this and taking photos and videos for our client and for our portfolio. On tables like this, I like to only use three chairs, even though this is a four chair set. And here I am telling you that the center line needs to be straight because nothing makes me more <laughs> aggravated than when I see a crooked line in the photos and a simple vase in the middle for a small table like this and the chair turned out allows you to really see the full table and the full chair effect and there you have it what do you think i'm going to put a before here in just a minute and you can see what a difference that this has made here's the before notice all the stains and here is the after loving this contrast between the antique walnut and the dark chocolate such a gorgeous combination we are matt and jennifer moses we are husband wife furniture flipping team like and subscribe for more flips